All right, in this video, we're going to talk about diffusion and osmosis. So just uh, diffusion, generic diffusion in general, um, is basically the movement of particles from high concentrations to low concentrations. So let's take a look at that. Let's say we had a container of water, a bucket or something like that, and we dropped a little bit of salt or some kind of soluble substance here. We'd have a lot of molecules right here and very few here. Um, so we say this is the high concentration and over here we have a low concentration, or zero, basically, because there's none there yet. What's going to start to happen is if these are soluble, if these particles are soluble in um, the solvent, they're going to start moving. All right, so they're going to start moving away from the high concentration towards the lower concentration. Um, this applies in fluids, so the molecules of the um, the material that the, the solute is in have to be fluid. In other words, they have to be a gas or a liquid, and they have to be in motion. That's what causes these guys to move then, because water molecules in this case are bumping into the salt ions and causing them to um, get dislodged and then move around. All right, so high concentration, low concentration is something we want to keep in mind, because that's going to be important in just about everything we discuss um, from here on. Eventually, what's going to happen is this container is going to uh, have the particles distributed equally. This might take a while. If you stir it or mix it up, it's going to go faster. If you just let it sit, this might take quite a while. Once they're evenly distributed, we say that's equilibrium, which means the concentration is the same all over the place. All right. Um, when we talk about diffusion in biology, we're inevitably going to be talking about cells and the cell membrane. And in a cell, the cell membrane actually allows water to pass through. Water can actually get through the cell membrane um, to a certain degree. It doesn't flow really quickly, but it sneaks through there uh, at a pretty significant degree. We call that movement of water osmosis. All right, so let's say we had a, um, let's say we had a, uh, a beaker or a cup or something like that, and we put into that cup um, a bunch of salt water. Okay, so we have a pretty good amount of salt in the water here, and we put a cell in here. I'm going to draw the cell really big so we can see it, but in, in, in reality that cell would be pretty small. All right, so what's going to happen is the concentration of salt is going to be high out here, and it's going to be low in here. So we have terms for that. We call this hypertonic, when the concentration of a certain place or solute is higher compared to another one. So when you're saying hypertonic, you're always comparing it to another one. You can't just say the solution is hypertonic all by itself. All right, compared to this one, which is hypotonic, meaning it has a lower concentration than the surrounding fluid. Here's what's going to happen, because there's only a few salt molecules here, and there's lots of them out here. What we end up saying is that the concentration of water on the inside is greater than the concentration of water on the outside. Now that sounds strange. Why do we have to say something so odd? Well, the reason why is because salt molecules, or I'm sorry, the salt ions want to come in. So the sodium ions and the chloride ions want to enter the cell, but they can't because the membrane is hydrophobic and it doesn't allow charged particles to get through. So the salt cannot enter the cell. The water, however, can sneak through. It can get through the membrane. And because the concentration of water is greater in here than out here, because so much space is taken up by salt molecules and there's less water molecules um, per milliliter, let's say, water is going to flow out. So the net flow of water will be out of the cell, and what's going to happen is that cell is going to shrink like this. It's going to shrivel up. Okay, So that process of cells shrinking in hypertonic solution is called plasmolysis. Plasmolysis. So lysis splitting or destruction of the cytoplasm. So the cytoplasm of the cell diffuses out. All right, the cell, when it's shrunk like this, would already be at equilibrium now, so it, there's no more net movement at this point. Um, what's going to happen is the concentration of the salt inside of the cell now is going to be equal to the outside. 
Okay, so that at that point, these two are going to be isotonic, meaning that they're the same. We have equal amounts of salt inside and outside. And you might say, well, wait a minute, I thought the inside of the cell had a lower salt. Yeah, in the beginning it did when all that water was in there. But when we remove the water, the um, overall concentration of salt inside of the cell went up. The, s the amount of salt stayed the same, but the volume of water decreased, so the concentration got stronger. It went up until it was the same as the outside. And then they're isotonic, means they're equal. All right, well, let's take a look at another situation where instead of putting the cell in a hypertonic solution, why don't we go ahead and put the cell in a hypotonic solution? Okay, so we're going to put it in pure water, which is hypotonic. As a matter of fact, it's the most hypotonic thing you could have. Put the cell in there, there's a certain amount of salt, so now the cell, the inside of the cell, is hypertonic. You might say, well, wait a minute, you just told us the inside of the cell is hypotonic. Yeah, but compared to this new environment, it's hypertonic. It's, it has a greater concentration of salts inside than it does outside. So now the concentration of water is greater out here than inside of the cell. So water is going to diffuse in, because keep in mind, the salt wants to come out, but it can't. So now water is going to go in, which is going to cause that cell to swell. And some cells will just swell up and get a little bit bigger, and other cells, like red blood cells, if you put them in pure water, will actually burst, will burst open, and the contents will spill into the water. Uh, that is called cytolysis. So lysis, once again, splitting or destruction, and cyto is cell. So cyto stands for cell. So this is cell splitting or cell bursting. So you might say, well, oh, now there's all this salt out here, so the concentration of salt on the outside went up. But keep in mind, the cell is so tiny that that doesn't really affect um, the concentration of salt in the, in the uh, cup in any kind of appreciable way. It's not really measurable. It's so tiny. All right, uh, like I said, some cells just swell because they have a good extracellular matrix to protect them. Um, other cells would burst depending on how much protection they have and how much strength they have. Um, keep, keep in mind the membrane is pretty weak. It's pretty flimsy. It's a fluid. All righty. What about plant cells? Well, plant cells, we can do something similar. If we put a plant cell in salt water, so hypertonic plant cell, nice and square, with a cell wall. Make that hypotonic. What's going to end up happening is water is going to diffuse out of the cell towards the salt. Because we got salt water here, hypertonic. The water is going to diffuse out because the concentration of water inside of the cell is greater. And that's going to end up doing this. And you might say, well, it's exactly the same as the animal. Not quite. It's similar. Some stuff is similar, but with I meant to draw that the same size. It's not supposed to be bigger, but okay. What happens is inside of the cell wall, there's actually a cell membrane right here, a real thin cell membrane lining the, the cell wall. We don't want to forget about that cell membrane, and all the contents of the plant cell are inside of that, all the chloroplasts and the vacuole and all that. Well, the vacuole is pretty much going to shrink and go to a tiny little thing, basically disappear, and the inside you know, this cell membrane here is going to just shrivel up inside of the cell wall. Because the cell wall is so strong, it's just going to stay there. So that's the cell wall. That's the cell membrane. So once again, plasmolysis in plant cells. Oops, plasmolysis. There we go. Not, not sick. Okay. Um, and all the chloroplasts and all that stuff would be in here. And then once, if we measure this, the concentration of salt in, inside of the cell would now be the same as out here. It would be isotonic. Because this water here is the same as this. Because water can easily pass through and salt can easily pass through the cell wall. There's big gaps in the cell wall. It doesn't restrict any flow. Just the cell membrane restricts flow of salt, but it allows water. And at that point, it's isotonic, and the net movement of water in or out of this cell is basically zero. Right, what if we take a plant cell and put it in distilled water, or just pure water? Let's do that once. So we take a, another plant cell, nice and square, put it in pure water, which is hypotonic, and then this would make the inside hypertonic. 
So now, uh, since the water follows the salt, the concentration of water out here is greater, it's going to go in. What that's going to do then is cause the whole thing to kind of swell up a little bit, like this. It will not burst. The reason it won't burst is, so water moves in. The reason it won't burst is because the cell wall is so strong and protects it. That's going to increase the pressure in here. It's going to be a lot of pressure because all this water has diffused in. And we call that pressure turgor pressure. So that's normal for plant cells to have a certain amount of turgor pressure. Whoops. I was going to write plant because I said plant. So turgor pressure is normal for healthy plant cells to have a little bit of that. They're kind of, it makes them strong. There's a bit of pressure here that makes them real hard and strong like this. And, um, allows, gives the plant good structure and stability. If you don't water your plants and they dry out and all the water leaves the cells, they lose turgor pressure and then the plant gets flimsy and floppy and starts to wilt. All right, so no cytolysis here because of the cell wall. It just uh, builds up more turgor pressure from a hypotonic solution. All right.